Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 13. So we're talking to you this week from a Model S. You might have been wondering, hey, whoa, whoa, where's Sparky? Yeah. Um, Sparky is uh, down at the service center getting some new snow tires put on because winter is coming. Uh, so one thing that's true for Model X and Model S owners is that when, when you bring your car in for service, they give you a comparable car or a similar car, like we got this great Model S, mm -hmm. to drive around for free while my car is being serviced. Imagine that, because if you go into most service centers with your car, you can maybe rent a car, right. but they're not going to just give you a Tesla off the lot and it's easy it's just like sign boom you're gone right pretty cool all right tesla all, all right. right we got a lot of news let's get right to let's it episode get 13 started india unveils the world's largest solar plant the world's largest the solar world's plant the world's largest solar plant in india in wow india so it's 648 megawatts that's awesome and india is also on track to be the world's third biggest solar market next year wow so how did we Big. find out about this story? We should credit our, one of our viewers, uh, Venkatesh Ravi. Um, he is an Indian viewer he, of ours. He so told us about this story? He told us all about this story. Thank so, you so much. Thank you so much. I love um, this community of this ours. This is awesome. So, um, you know, if you guys have any other stories, we'd love to hear about them. So Yeah, be a reporter for us. Right. <laughs> There's no money in it, but <laughs> we'll definitely give you a shout out. So, um, yeah, so getting back to the, it, this is the largest solar power, power plant in a single location. So it's taking the title away from the Topaz Solar Farm in California. Wow. Which has 550 megawatts. So it's wow. beating it by about 100 megawatts. Go India. So that's, this is really cool. Nice. So there's one really cool thing about this solar plant. Yeah. Which is that it's robotically cleaned every day. It's cleaned by robots? Cleaned by robots that are charged by I the solar that. system. That's great. So. That's really cool. I heard that by 2022, India wants to have 60 million homes powered by solar energy. Wow. And it has a goal of, by 2030, of having 40% of the country powered by non-fossil fuels. Wow, that's really great. Yeah, isn't that amazing? That's awesome. So this is another solar story. This is from Solar City Tesla. Um, we heard in the latest election that Florida voted to not vote for a ballot initiative that was basically paid for by the big energy companies. Mm -hmm. um, and so now Solar City is going to be really moving into Florida big time. We just heard from Lyndon Rive, who is the CEO of Solar City. They say that the company is going to scale up its services in Florida and they're going to add many more locations and hundreds of jobs. In fact, he says uh, it eventually will lead to 200 to 300 jobs based on the demand. We'll need electricians, people in construction, roofers, salespeople, and administrators. So, I mean, that's interesting because in Nevada, I mean, Solar City has, you know, a thousand employees within two years of, of starting there. Yeah, so it could be that very soon they're going to have hundreds, if not thousands, of employees in Florida. Right, because, I mean, it's so, it's so sunny in Florida. It's the sunshine state. Wow. How could it not be sold? Exactly. All right, so moving up the coast, um, New York City is buying 50 Chevy Bolts. 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 Okay. That's so this is the, the new car. So we might be seeing some, some Chevy Bolts on the East Coast instead of it just being in California and Oregon. So this is the city buying them? Yeah, so New York City is, um, you know, buying them for municipal employees and stuff like that. I think it's good. They have a goal of adding 2,000 electric cars to their municipal fleet. Um, yeah. Right now they're at 500. This will bring the number up to 550. Some people are saying that they're buying 80 um, cars, but they're not. Right now they've only bought 50 and they think they might buy 30 more. Okay. They're not even close to halfway to their electric car goal. At least they have a goal. Right. But I mean, the saddest part to me is that it's the biggest, they have the biggest EV fleet. Of any city of in any the US? city in the U.S. So who's who comes in close to that? L.A. is behind them. Um, they have about 300 electric vehicles, but wow. New York right now is is taking the, the lead. And so I heard that they're buying them from GM at a slight discount. I think they're getting them around 33,000 from GM, and then they get an $8,200 federal rebate, which is like a tax thing and a federal grant thing. Right. So they get the cost down to about 25,000 per car, which is better than the uh, around the same deal they were getting with the Prius. Right. So I guess they're now switching over to the Bolt because it gives them more range. Right. And so I also heard that they're adding 25 more charging stations. So that yeah. way, I, I mean, I think that's pretty good. That's good. Yeah. Hey, at least we're moving in the right direction. So moving from New York uh, to the moon. T to the moon? Yes. So there is a company called Moon Express, and they are a lunar mining company. What? What? So they 
plan to land a rover on the moon using a Falcon 9 rocket. So the, the founder of this company has expressed interest in, in going to the moon, sort of not necessarily colonizing it, but, but definitely sending people up there to start mining resources off the moon. Well, actually, I, so yeah, the, the founder of the company, Naveen Jain, we'll put a link below to some little quick videos of his. I think he wants to mine it, but I also think he understands the importance of colonizing it because if you colonize the moon first, you learn a lot, and we're so close to the moon, we're only three days away. Right. So I think he does have some ideas about colonizing it. I don't know if he thinks about colonizing it, but it definitely there are some challenges that um, you face going to the moon that are similar to Mars, and, and that's yeah. what he sort of wants to be learning about. Well, this also feeds into the next SpaceX story, which is that SpaceX had been on, on hold after that um, incident in September where the um, it had blown up on the launch pad. Yeah. Well, now the FAA has given the go-ahead a green light, it looks like, to go ahead with launch. So it looks like in uh, December 16th is a tentative date for the next launch of the Falcon 9. Uh, they're going to be po possibly launching a... Um, satellite, communication satellite with, with Iridium Communications. Cool. So that's not a date that we were given by SpaceX, but it, it is a date that's being floated out there. So it's possible that within a couple weeks, we'll be back uh, in space. Awesome. Okay. So we got any Tesla news this week? So there is some Tesla news. Um, there was a really crazy looking crash in Germany on the oh, Autobahn, yeah. um, but the driver walked away. So he was going, what, what, um, sources say a tremendous speed. After this accident, he dropped. He walked away. So yeah, he slammed into the back of a of a trailer. So the the trailer went up over the car and was you know pinning the car down. Uh, the driver was able to get out and and walk away from this. So wow. I mean, he had some serious injuries, but he was going at, at an incredible speed. I heard that when testing of the Model S, that the equipment that the U.S. government uses to test and tries to crush down on the car actually broke because it didn't have enough G's to crush the car. Yeah. It, I think it withstood four G's of force. That's the equivalent of putting four S's on top of an S. Right. Um, so there's a quote here. It says, of note, during validation of the Model S roof crush protection at an independent commercial facility, the testing machine failed at just above four G's. While the exact number is uncertain due to the Model S breaking the testing machine, <laughs> what it means is that at least four additional fully loaded Model S vehicles could be placed on top of an owner's car without the roof caving in. This is achieved primarily through the center B pillar reinforcements attached via aerospace grade bolts. Wow. So. Anytime you put aerospace grade bolts in a car, I'm in favor of it. That's pretty cool. Another Tesla story here is that Tesla takes a win. They were going up against the dealers in Virginia, mm -hmm. and remember, they weren't allowed to sell cars in Virginia. Well, that has just been overruled. The hearing examiner there concluded that Tesla isn't really competing. So let me just back up a step here. Um, there were dealership laws in Virginia to protect dealers, and that, that was mainly to protect them from the manufacturers of cars. So let's say you were a Ford dealer. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be fair if Ford came in after you set up your dealership and then undercut you, right? So these dealership laws were set up to protect those dealers, and I totally get that. Mm -hmm. But the dealerships were using these laws to keep Tesla out, and it was working for a while. The courts were voting in their favor, but now it's been found that basically the dealerships make their money mainly from fixing cars, right? right? You buy a Ford and then a couple years later you need all sorts of parts. Teslas don't work that way. Tesla doesn't make its money from fixing its cars. It makes its money from selling you the car. Selling the car. So dealerships don't work the same way, right? You buy your car from the dealership and they will service it for you, but they don't make money off of that. Oh, so they, it wouldn't be profitable. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, be viable for them to actually exactly. do that. And so now they finally come around to seeing that that's the case. And so they're saying, you know what? You can open your dealership because de uh, other dealerships wouldn't be able to compete selling exactly. Teslas. Exactly, you see. got it. So another win for Tesla. Well, sort of a win. So Tesla is pushing the it's boundaries of of Michigan's direct sales law. Um, so it opened a showroom in the state, but what they did was they opened it inside of a Nordstrom's. Well, a Nordstrom clothing store. A clothing store, and so there's all these like signs that say like not for sale, and like it's really cheeky and funny um, that they're like actively you know, promoting the car, but they're not allowed to, like, say that they can sell it or anything. That's hilarious. Uh, what kind of customer is going to go into a Nordstrom? You know, you walk into a Nordstrom, you're looking for a jacket, yeah. um, then you leave with a car. <laughs> could happen. It could happen. <laughs> you know? Awesome. So let's change gears here, just like this next story. Car makers from around the world are changing gears now. We're hearing from Daimler and Toyota um, that they are actually realizing that they were wrong 
electric cars are a viable product. Right. And in fact, Daimler is putting 11 billion, with a B, dollars into electric cars wow. because they've realized this is the future. And Toyota has put its president in charge of electric vehicle programs. Wow, that's amazing. So, I mean, this is a huge shift because before yeah. everyone was saying, oh, electric cars, they're blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> and now they're, they're buckling down. They're putting their money where their mouth was against. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, this is this is amazing. It so, is amazing because it's showing these huge car companies are coming around, and they wouldn't be coming around if it weren't for the money. They see that they were wrong, and they need to start shifting. Yeah, so I mean, here's another story that sort of relates right to this. Um, so there's five automakers; they're joining forces to deploy 400 charging stations throughout Europe. So the automakers are BMW, Daimler's Mercedes, Ford, and Volkswagen's Audi and Porsche. Cool. So, and so that's kind of five, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they're going to start in 2017. Um, and basically, every car with uh, CCS can use it. They'll have uh, level two and level three, and also this new ultra fast high power charger, which should charge at 350 kilowatts. That's great news. So, there'll be a charging system throughout Europe. Right. You know, that reminds me of a, there's another car company that has um, superchargers throughout Europe. Oh, um, what is it? I can't remember the name of it. Was it? It's um, on the tip of my tongue. Is it Wait BMW? Minute. No, no, it starts with a T. Uh, t oh, it's Tesla. <laughs> yes, they already have uh, 260 superchargers in Europe. Well, that's and, not as many as 400. But it's going to be doubled by the time the Model 3 comes out in 2018. Wow. So they're already there. Wow. And that's why these guys are playing catch up. Right. And so the thing is, they're saying they're, they're going to put in 400 charging stations. Mm -hmm. um, but they're saying that they're going to be putting in level 2s, level 3s, and these ultra-fast power, oh, power chargers. Oh, I see. I wonder if they're going to put in, like, 300 level 2s, <laughs> like, 75 level 3s, and, like, right. 25 ultra-fast. That's probably what they're going to do. I mean, it, it's yeah. just, like, I mm -hmm. want to believe that it's going to be this glorious utopia with super fast charging for electric vehicles, but I, I don't know if I can believe it. This next international story is about Spain. Uh, we have talked about Spain before opening some um, some stores, but now Tesla's officially opening its Model S and X sales in Spain. Deliveries will start in the first quarter of 2017. So for all of our Spanish viewers out there, you can get your Model S or X just very, very soon. That's so awesome. I mean, we were talking to um, one of our viewers in Spain mm -hmm. and uh, he was saying that there were no superchargers and so I went online and I looked and I noticed that there were two more superchargers from when from what he had said and that they had just gone online Wow! and that there were like four more permits all across Spain. Interesting. So they're totally expanding into Spain. It's amazing that they actually, that Tesla, this company, can can be thinking so far in advance to be like okay, we're going to open this, and then we're going to have the superchargers available right then. Mm -hmm. You know, because there were none before, and they weren't selling any cars, and now they're, you know, they've yeah. done it. And this follows the expansion that Tesla has had into Mexico, South Korea, Taiwan, New Zealand, and Ireland. Yeah. Um, and I do want to point out that in Spain, the electric uh, electric utility rates are very high. Oh. And so many people are conjecturing that solar city and solar roof sales, mm -hmm. along with battery pack sales, will do very well in Spain because of that fact. Um, even though maybe car sales won't be so good until the Model 3 comes out. Yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, it's always sunny in Spain. All right, so another Tesla story, a Model X story, is that we've heard that there's the five-seater Model X with the expanded uh, storage in the mm -hmm. back. Um, now the second row seats fold down, and we have some pictures here, and there's a video link to um, one of the first guys who go out to the factory and pick up his car. That's awesome. That is huge back there. Oh, my God. It looks like you could fit anything back there. Like, I don't know if it, I would even like want Like a small it, elephant. Yeah, a definitely. A, a, maybe two baby elephants, a couple, I would say. A couple jaguars. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but there's, I mean, there's so much space. There's that whole area where the where the third row used to be, that now lifts up, and there's like an extra foot of space. Yeah. And you, so you get the same well as as Sparky has, mm -hmm. um, which is huge. I mean, you can just store like a suitcase and you know, a pack of water. It's, it, it's it would huge. it would be great for a business. It'd be great for a small business. Yeah. Absolutely. I you mean, know, a contractor. Right. Any anytime you know you need to transport a giant cake or a you know clowns. 
or flowers. I mean, yep. anything anything that you need to be driving stuff it, around. It's the it. largest cargo space of any SUV with 88 cubic feet. That's unbelievable. It really is. It's unmatched by any other car. So here's another Tesla story. This um, relates more to the S and the Model 3. Okay. There are some new pictures of um, Model S's with an all glass roof. Ooh. So right now we're sitting in a one of the older S's, um, but basically from, from this point in the roof, all the way back is all glass. So you lose this back here. Um, and oh my gosh. That's the, gonna be amazing. I feel like I feel like the video doesn't even do it justice. Mm -hmm. I mean to be able to just sort of look up when you're in the back seat and just just keep tilting mm -hmm. your head back. It just must And imagine be. going camping in one of those. Oh my gosh. Wow. I can't even imagine. I can't wait. Um, and so they're conjecturing that this is going to be similar to what you could get on the Model 3. Yeah, that'll be an option on so the Model 3. I think that that would be really, really cool. That would be really cool. Hey, um, thank you so much for watching today. Thank you to all of our subscribers and a special thanks to all of our Patreon patrons. Justin, I want to thank you by name because yes. you are hugely important to our channel. Without you, we couldn't do this. Yeah. Um, Kevin Burbridge, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Jeff Manning, we know you. And thank you for thank supporting you. us so much. Awesome. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Uh, Eli Lipcon, thank you. Martin Spurigit. I'm glad you got stuck with that name. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Logan Hardy, thank you. Thank you. Pradeep Dhaliwal, thank you so much. And Alexander Libera, thank you so much. Big, big thank you to all of our Patreon, Patreon subscribers. subscribers. If you want to help us out on Patreon, just click the link below. Go there and see. We've got a bunch of different little pledge things that you can get to make it a little bit easier for you. And, and we just thank you. Any amount you can give would be so helpful to us because we have to buy all sorts of crazy little things to make the show work. We have yeah. to buy, you know, batteries and, and, and cables and splitters. And splitters and, I mean, it just every week it's like we need another thing to make a cool shot happen for yeah. the show. Um, and your help is so important to making this happen. Right. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. And if you've already subscribed and, and you watch this every week, you know, maybe consider just, you know, giving us like three bucks a month or something. It would go a long way really to, to, to helping us do this show and, and all the other things that we do on YouTube. So thank you so much for watching. You, this was Now You Know, Tesla Time News, episode 13. Hey, congratulations this week goes out to Steve Banks. You are the winner of the Tesla Insane t-shirt. So just message us back privately with your address and shirt size and we'll get that out to you right away. The other thing I wanna remind everybody is that we're gonna take your best comments that we see on this week's thread and we are gonna talk about them and answer questions in next week's episode. So if you've got questions or comments, please post them below and we'll try and get to them. Thanks a lot, now you know.